In my world, I went to sleep one night and I'd been holding my three-month-old baby and sending my five-year-old girl off to school. And I awoke the next day, but it had been five weeks and I'd been in a coma. And I looked up and Mark was standing over me and he had this very intense look of love in his eyes. And he said, honey, you've been very ill and they've had to amputate your hands and feet. Mark and Cindy lived the typical life. Both were driven in their careers until ultimately deciding to settle down and start a family. But not long after the arrival of their second child, Cindy suddenly fell ill. In February of 2011, I was a wife and a mom and a business manager. I was on maternity leave and my son had the croup, so I would take him back and forth to the hospital. And after the last visit, I spiked a fever. I had a strange ache in my right leg and I started vomiting. That became more aggressive and I became more and more ill. There was two different uh, 911 calls. The first crew came and said, oh, your wife has a bad flu and she needs to take some medicine and rest. And the next day we realized that this was an irregular flu. We called 911 again and they came and then they rushed her to uh, emergency. Ensuring the kids were all right, Mark raced to the hospital unaware that his wife was in a fight for her life. On my way there, my cell phone rang. It was the hospital calling. It was a nurse, and uh, she said, uh, do you realize how serious this is? Like, my wife said, oh, I understand. Well, we need to hear right away. You need to make some decisions. I get to the hospital that night. Lots of doctors around Cindy. I had to sign off on them putting Cindy in a coma so she could uh, fight this bacterial infection. They didn't know it was flesh-eating disease at that point and they induced Cindy in a coma, put her up into uh, ICU. They diagnosed me with necrotizing fasciitis. Eventually my kidneys, liver, heart, and respiratory system failed. And my hands and feet went from blue to purple to black. And they started dying, shriveling. Every day I was at the hospital and the same head doctor would tell me, I don't think your wife's gonna make it. Every day, came home one night around 11 p.m. We had lots of friends, family helping us out with the kids. They're at our house. And uh, one of my friends pulled me aside and said, uh, Mark, you know, we've been talking and you know, just take a look at Cindy. We don't know what's going on with her hands and feet. They're black, they're shriveled, that fleshing disease eating away at her leg. Doctors say she probably has brain damage. What kind of life is she gonna have? And you may want to think about pulling that plug. And she may not want to even live. The weight of this reality was almost too much for Mark to bear. He drove back to the hospital to be with his dying wife. The nurses let me in. I said, I need to pray with my wife. And I said my first real honest prayer to the Lord on my knees beside Cindy's bed. I said, God, I need to know if Cindy wants to live, if she wants to die if I need to pull the plug. I, I don't know what to do here. It's, it, it's not my decision to make. A desperate Mark searched for an answer to his prayers. And a few short days later, God delivered it in a way that left no doubt. It was my mother-in-law. And she left me a voice message. She said, Mark, I don't know how to say this, but I'm supposed to give you a message. I've been hearing voices and, and it sounds like angels singing all morning saying, Cindy wants to live, she needs more time, don't pull the plug. To me, this was the evidence I needed, like God was in control, and it's like this burden about Cindy's illness and everything going on, I just left. It was like it just washed away. I knew she was gonna live, I knew he was real, I knew he was in control, and I went upstairs to the ICU and I, I, I walked into that uh, doctor that kept telling me every day that she's gonna die. <laughs> and before he could say anything, I said, you know what, she's gonna live. You see, you'll see, I know she's gonna live, God told me so. Cindy began to stabilize, but the damage to her hands and feet were irreversible. That left Mark with another difficult decision. And I had a call from the doctor at about 11.30 at night. We need you to make a decision and to sign off the paperwork. Uh, we're gonna have to amputate all four of Cindy's limbs. When I woke up from the coma, and Mark told me that I had lost my hands and feet. I couldn't believe it. 
And my first thoughts were of my children. How would I take care of them? And how could I do anything for myself? And really cried out to God, why would you do this to me? And a nurse walked in and read me Psalm 139. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And it goes on to talk about how we're created at the beginning of time and that God created me with great love and great hope for my future. And I just in that moment knew that he would be the one who would carry me through. And we have an opportunity to, to allow him to carry it for us. I knew that God was all powerful. I had been told that since I was a child, but I didn't know how I was going to overcome it. As I lay in the coma, I felt the whispering in my heart that I needed to write this story. And I felt the whispering in my heart that I would be able to shine his light. We found great purpose in all of this. It wasn't our purpose. It was his purpose. It was really horrible what happened. We endured much pain and suffering. And sometimes we don't know in trial, why is this happening to us? Why, why do I have to endure this? And certainly our trials didn't end there. But God had a purpose. He came in and carried us through. And shine on is a reflection of that light that we are all called to shine for Him.